offline first with web components. So my name is Madi. I work for Vaden. How many of you heard about Vaden before? Awesome. How many of you are actually developing with Vaden right now? Ah, <laughs> that's awesome as well. <laughs> All right. So um, Vaden, for those of who didn't hear about it before, is a, a framework, an open source framework for Java developer. It's a UI framework, right? And that's pretty much what I have for this slide. Because today I'm going to talk about technology in general. So five years ago, uh, many of you probably faced this situation where you want to convince your boss that you should migrate your application to cloud. You should no longer build desktop applications. You should move to cloud. For me, it was, I've been there, and it was a little bit harder. But nowadays, luckily, this is, does not exist anymore. Everyone already know that cloud is the way to go, right? And whether you like it or not, but also mobile is taking over. So the question is when you start a new application or a new project is to tell your boss, you should not really make it for desktop. You should make it for mobile. The next, uh, the next iteration now is for building for mobile. But I personally have a small argument about that. Uh, whenever I, I hear somebody telling me that uh, mobile is uh, next thing and you should do everything on mobile, I kind of feel like, no, this is not true. There is a problem, right? How many of you think that he cannot develop on mobile, for example, or create a presentation or Photoshop or video editing on mobile? Oh, yeah, most of you. Yes, and I do agree with you. Mobile is not really there. So what is the question? What is, that? What is it all about? The reason behind that is because you are a content, and including myself, we are a content producer. A content producer is a person who has fancy big screen in his office. Uh, he's using heavy software for video editing or photoshopping or uh, software developing. He has a very fancy big uh, processor. And moreover, he has nice high-speed broadband network. This is most of us. And for this fact, some people tend to think that the, the, dar direct, the, the targeted audience for your application is going to have similar stuff, which is not true. Your user doesn't really care about that. Your user is way more simpler about that. He doesn't really about fancy technology. He doesn't really uh, like care about having big processor or nice screen. He just wants something that work, something that is usable. He thinks that mobile is awesome because he can use it everywhere, and he wish that everything run on mobile. They made a statistics, and they saw that the number of connected people online from mobile devices took over at the end of 2013, or at the beginning of 2014. So whether you like it or not, the number of people who like to use mobile is increasing. So this is up to you now, who you want to target. Do you want to target content producer like myself and probably most of the people in this room, or do you want to target the vast majority of people around the world? All right. Many companies around the world decided to go through this and uh, they decided to like, see what is the possibility of developing, developing application for mobile first. And for example, this comparison show you how is it like to start developing for mobile. So basically, if you do the traditional way, develop for desktop, then you will have to put a lot of effort to convert your application to work uh, nice on tablet, and then put more effort to make your application work for mobile devices. But if you start with mobile first concept, just develop for mobile, then eventually your application out of the box work on tablet and on desktop. And then you can add some more fancy effects to make it look nicer on tablet, and then add more even features to make it fancier on desktop application. So this is a mobile first design. And I have my own definition for mobile first. Think about your user. He's going to hold a mobile device in his hand and going to a cafe, for example, to order 
a cup of coffee. Will your user be able to still use your application while holding a cup of coffee and holding the mobile on the other hand? Which means that he wants to be able to access all the functionality with only one thump, the rule of thump. So everything is clickable with a thump, a big thump. Everything is navigatable. You can navigate through the application with one thumb. Can you do everything with one thumb? This is how you can test the compatibility of your application with mobile first design. At Google, they do something more interesting. When they release a new component, they, don't, they no longer test it on desktop. They decide that this component is working and ready for release if it works perfectly on mobile devices. And one more thing. So, your user is holding a cup of coffee in mobile and started to walk a little bit and then went to subway or something like that and then went underground and lost connection. He's offline. Will he be able to still use your application or not? So this is the second question you need to ask yourself. Is your application is going to stop working totally because just your user is losing connection a little bit? Actually, mobile first design contain a lot of topic and my interest today to talk about offline first design. But before going over that, uh, but before going over that, uh, I'm going to introduce uh, a small concept which is called web components. Basically, I'm talking about offline first because it's the perfect way of having 100% always on user experience. But let's go back to web components. How many of you hear about web components? Impressive. I would say 50% of the audience. So quickly, I will, in, I will go very, very briefly about the introduction, what is web components. So web components is a new concept of having advanced object-oriented concept inside your HTML code. So interoperability, um, uh, interoperability, uh, inheritance, and so on. So uh, the web component concept consists of four topics, um, templates, shadow DOM, HTML imports, and uh, custom elements. Briefly, very briefly, the definition. Templates is uh, an HTML template that you define in your HTML code that is going to be your custom element, and then this HTML template, uh, HTML template contains some HTML code, divs and labels and so on. This code, we are going to refer to it later on as a shadow DOM. And then to have this HTML implant template inside another HTML document, you need to use HTML imports. Finally, you need to give it a name, a selector name. This selector name, we are going to use it, a custom element. So let's take this in practice. Let's talk about, for example, the video tag. A video tag is now a standard tag, uh, HTML5 standard, and many people are using it right now. Probably if you open most of videos now online, uh, you will find it using the video tag. And if you inspect this tag from the browser and show shadow DOMs, you're gonna find a bunch of divs and labels and stuff like that. Those are basically the shadow DOMs of the template called video. So videos started to become uh, standard, even though browser manufacturers have been developing this web component concept internally, and this is time to start to take over and let the developer build their own custom tag, their own web components. Unfortunately, this concept is quite new, and this is kind of the, from the future. Some browser doesn't support this yet. Probably the only browsers that fully support web components to, uh, today is only Chrome. That's why Google came in and introduced something called Polymer to allow all browsers polyfill any kind of web components. So you create a web component and then you want to render it on Internet Explorer, for example, or Edge or something like that. Then with Polymer, you can use polyfill that will fix that. And Google didn't stop here, so they also created a bunch of uh, Polymer elements which uh, consist of a good infrastructure for creating your advanced components. And they consist of many elements like paper elements, uh, material design concepts, and so on. And the element of my interest is Platinum element because it provides you mobile functionalities like Bluetooth, offline uh, caching, and so push, and so on. 
So this is one of the interesting elements that you might use. And using it is very, very simple. With three lines of code, you just get your website cached. We at Vaden, we also created our uh, Polymer-based Vaden elements that are using the concept of uh, Polymer. And for example, we have the grid element, which uh, comes with uh, pretty interesting features like uh, uh, frozen columns, uh, fixed rows, have multiple headers, scrolling vertically and horizontally, and so on. Um, basically, this is how it looks like at the end. So with just this tag, Vaden grid, you put into your HTML code, you get this nice data grid. Looks awesome. We have also many other uh, elements that you can find on our website, like date picker, upload, drag and drop upload, and so on. We have also this uh, nice commercial element as well. Uh, and this is basically commercial because it's uh, based on high charts. And with thousands of combination, you can just change the tag name, tag name and get a nice chart. But let's get back to offline first. So I talked about web components and offline first. Let's put this together. So uh, looks like the platinum element is the solution. I can just use platinum element and get nice offline application. No, this is not true. Because the caching is probably for small websites. But if you have data, if you have relational database, how can you navigate through the application if it's totally offline? That's why Google, again, created something called Love Field. Love Field is something that I like, and it's pretty active. It's open source, fully written in JavaScript, where you can uh, have a relational database inside your browser. And when the application goes offline, a copy of your server database, basically, inside your browser. And when your application goes offline, you just manipulate with the data offline. Even though Love Field is pretty simple to use, and I like it so much, it has a small drawback. Let's assume that your user started to use your application offline and then started to modify the data. How can you push the modification back to the server? Unfortunately, Google decided that they will not provide any replication features in Lovefield. They said that there are a lot of protocols to support and they don't want to go over this hassle for now. That's why I'm presenting you another solution today, which is Firebase. For those of you who's uh, following the news, probably this slide is a bit outdated, only three weeks outdated because Google acquired Firebase and rebranded Firebase, and it's now no longer just a simple solution. It's a platform for a lot of things. But to focus on my topic today, the best thing you can do with Firebase is hosting your database on their servers. With a small fee, you can have this replication and have everything up and working. So although this is a nice um, implementation by Google and you can start to use it right away and probably many of you are already using Firebase, there is also a free open source solution out there called PouchDB. PouchDB is telling you simply use a CouchDB protocol on your backend server and it's open source. You can start using it right away. So what is the idea here? The idea is I don't just want to have in-browser database, I want to be able to sync back to the server. Any modification, I want to replicate it back to the server. So PouchDB in practice, um, this guy here is the mobile, your browser, and then you have the server, and you have the CouchDB protocol, and then PouchDB will basically make uh, continuous replication from client side to the server side as long as you are online. Once you go offline, then you have a local copy stored and your mobile, uh, mobile device or mobile browser can still read and write on the local version of the data. So this is pretty much it. Uh, PowerDB is very powerful in that sense. You can uh, manipulate the data. Uh, make, think about your application that is all the time working with a local version, not remote version. And let PowerDB manage this copying and replication. Now let's talk about challenges. So probably you don't want to load everything. So having and downloading all the data at the beginning probably is not the best solution. So you need to refine and select what kind of data need to be downloaded in your, your browser, not download all your big database in that browser. Second challenge is security. So you need to implement authentication. For example, if the user log out to make sure that the data is wiped and make sure that the data is not accessible except from this domain. 
also uh, race condition, which is a topic uh, related to all browser, uh, all database architecture in general, where uh, you want to make sure that if a modification has been done offline, what is the best guess on how to update the data if the data got changed online somewhere else as well. So that was pretty it. Um, I'm going to hang around if you want to see a demo. I have a demo actually if you open uh, expense, if you just Google Vaden expense manager, there is a nice demo that put everything together and it works offline and it shows you how to use uh, polymer elements, color, uh, components, and also how to use uh, uh, PowerDB in syncing data offline. Any questions? Because time's up, so I think I'm forced to take questions if there are any. No questions? All right, awesome. Thank you for attending and have a great day. If you are still interested and still hanging around and nobody's kicking me out, probably I can show you the demo, right? So, two minutes. Okay, so very, very quickly. Um, here is the demo. So this is Expanse Manager, it's running on demo.vaden.com. And then if I log in, this is basically built with uh, web components and uh, Vaden components and as well as PouchDB for storing. So as you can see, it's responsive and it's uh, replacing the data. If, if I just zoom out a little bit, it has responsive uh, design. This is the Vaden grid. This is, for example, let's try to um, filters this data. So I'm going to choose a specific date range, for example, uh, March only, and then the data got filtered. You can put a minimum and so on. So this is a date picker component. With one tag, you can have this. Also, there is one nice component, which is the upload component. I'm going to try to drag a picture here, and it got updated. So back to the full mode. Yeah. So. It got updated, and you can, for example, select the merchant, select the total amount, and select the date. And finally, add your comment. And save. Ah. Yeah. So uh, let's clear the filter. And we can see, it. We can see the data. And it works totally offline, it's open source, check it out. Thank you again for attending and have a great day.